you know, in colleges after, you know, grueling years of very, what is very often rote learning, um, you do tend to find that India's best minds, as, you know, Swami so eloquently put it, gravitate to brand name companies, like Infosys, of course. And then it seems to me from talking to a whole lot of young uh, techies, they seem to get sucked into this rat race of, uh, you know, um, marriage, EMIs, and children. And uh, uh, somehow this doesn't seem to uh, happen exactly that way uh, in the West. Uh, and um, obviously, uh, despite all this, something in our school education works. So exactly what happens after that has, in a sense, pursuing the Indian dream in some way actually been crippling uh, science and uh, uh, research in India? Youngsters would want to take up jobs that gives some kind of recognition. It could be money, it could be fame, could be respect, admiration, etc., etc. That's the reality. In the U.S., you know, when our daughter was to go and uh, do her undergraduate degree, we went to a few colleges where she had gotten admission, really prestigious ones, and we spoke to about ten youngsters. Out of ten. Five said they wanted to be MBAs and become investment bankers. We said they wanted to be uh, lawyers because they said that gives a lot of money, that gives a lot of prestige, etc. There was not one one girl who said, "I want to be a scientist." Now, how is it that that country has continued to, to uh, enthuse? One, the number of students going, in, going to colleges has increased tremendously. Percentage is much higher. So therefore, we also have to first increase the number of students that go to college. Second, we will have to have teachers create interest in science, in mathematics, in engineering, uh, not uh, solving engineering problems right from school stage. It is possible. We, you know, we have had wonderful teachers. Third, we have to create platforms for recognition and respect of academicians in this country. We have to make sure that a good professor, a good science and engineering institute administrator is respected, is saluted. I mean, you're uh, actually dealing with some of this on the ground. You're actually taking courses, uh, teaching classes in institutes that are not, as Professor Balram said, the top-rung institutions. What's your view of what you've seen? I still um, I strongly believe that um, the success of the IT industry is the root cause of many of these problems that Professor Balra mentions. In the following way, um, if you look at plus two, three lakh people take the IIT entrance exam. Three thousand of them get in, or five thousand, I don't know how the number is, five thousand, roughly. The rest of them start their undergraduate career thinking of themselves as failures. I know cases of students in NIT Suratkal, one of the top institutes in the country. The first two months, the discussion among students is, if only I had cracked that one problem, I would have been an IIT. I should have done that, I would have been an IIT. And they start in the best institute in Karnataka, starting themselves as failures. And 20 of them, 30 of them write IIT again and go there, and the others are even more depressed that these people have gone and I'm still here. Second, the, at the end of four years of engineering, the recruitment process, about 100,000 a year are hired by the IT industry. Mr. Muthi will know the numbers better. And the recruitment happens from the top 10% of engineering colleges. And the recruitment in general is the following way. There are 600 outcoming students in a college from all the branches. The top IT company comes in. 400 of them get hired, irrespective of the branches in which they studied. This has been going on for 10 years now. Now, what is the message you send to a mechanical engineer, a civil engineer? Don't worry about your engineering. You're going to go for an IT company. Focus on what skills are looking at, being looked at for the IT company. 
This message has gone to the teachers of engineering colleges in other departments. Everybody is going to an IT job, so why bother teaching them this because nobody is interested. So systematically, down the stream, the message has gone. It has taken 10, 15 years of success for this to happen, not in the first 10 years, because output, good job is where most people are coming to colleges, and a good job depends on other skills than core skills in any discipline. And the people who have not managed to get into engineering colleges are even more depressed because, oh, you're in BSc, didn't get into engineering, maybe there's a problem. If you're in BA, it's worse. You didn't even get into science, you're in BA, right? Now, kids feel themselves as failures. Parents of kids feel themselves as even more of a failure because they didn't manage to put them in engineering colleges. This environment of an engineering job as an objective for reaching an IT career has gone down all the way.